I'm meteorologist Carly Gomez, and we are tracking the next big storm system to make its way into California. It's February 3rd, nighttime hours, and we're already starting to see the storm arrive along the coastline here of California from central towards southern California as we get our first look at that wet weather arriving within the low pressure system. Now it'll make its way onshore into our overnight early morning hours. We continue to see it shifting up from the south and moving its way north towards Sacramento and the San Joaquin Valley into the early morning hours. And we're also expecting very strong wind gusts associated with this system. So not only are we getting the downpours for those valley spots and along the coastline there, we'll also start to see that heavy snowfall up high with as much as two to four feet of snow expected. Now, Add in that out uh, strong wind gust that we're expecting anywhere from 50 to 60 miles per hour. That's going to make visibility very hard, reduce visibility for the Sierra with wide out conditions and even hard to see on the roadways when it comes to driving. Let's talk rain this water year. So we have been in a deficit for most of the water year, but now after just the last storm system, we're starting to see ourselves in a better situation, a bit of a surplus for most areas like Stockton, Modesto, a huge surplus with two and three quarters inches of rain. They got some of the most rain that we've seen so far because they continue to get hit with downpours, thunderstorms that rolled in just about 48 hours ago, and that really added to their rain totals. Now, downtown Sacramento's departure here is almost an inch, or we're seeing Sacramento Executive Airport just a tenth of an inch. But for normal to date uh, average, uh, I should say, rainfall from October 1st to now, we're not too far behind. And after this next storm system, we should see ourselves above average, at least around the Sacramento area. Stockton and Modesto are already looking good, and they'll continue to see themselves doing better. Now, talking snowfall, we are behind. Last 48 hours of the Central Sierra Snow Lab, 14 and a half inches of snow. In the seven-day total, 25 inches. Now, that's the snow water equivalent for just the last 24 hours, which is about a foot of snow. It's only been about a little over an inch. So when you think about a foot of snow to about one inch of water, that's kind of what we've been looking at with the warmer system. And snowfall this water year has been 130 inches. The average is 190. So yeah, we're behind 60 inches of snowfall. This next storm system could put the peaks closer to six feet of snow. So we're just kind of waiting and seeing at this point in time how much snow we actually get from this storm system, how long it lasts. And if we're going to at least get closer to where we should be this time of year when it comes to snowfall. Let's take a look at the comparison here. You can actually see the 190 versus the 130. The red there is where we stand. The blue line is where we kind of should be the average this time of year. So we will be pretty much jumping up quite a bit closer to the average as we start getting toward Wednesday. That's when we expect most of the snow to begin dwindling down and everything's slowing down. We can get some better numbers and better averages. Now we are 68% of average for this time of year and our snow water to date is very similar, 65%. So we can boost ourselves up closer to average and where we should be and continue to remain on that track until the April 1st number comes. That's typically when things start slowing down. We should be having somewhat of an average water year and snowfall year. All right, let's talk about the impacts we expect to see with this storm system in the atmospheric river. Sunday through Tuesday morning, this is our biggest impacts, but primarily it's really going to be a Sunday through Monday night event. Tuesday morning, we could still see some residual kind of rainfall or snowfall coming, but other than that, it's really going to be a Sunday to Monday event. Rainfall is going to be high, but the winds will be severe. That's going to be the bigger impact for us. Flooding will also be in a high category, but it's mostly neighborhood localized flooding, road ponding, things of that nature. As we look at one to two inches of it, rising rivers, creeks, and streams also a concern. Now, snowfall, this is where we also hit the severe category because of two to two to four feet of snow. That's a lot of snow in about a 24 to 36 hour period. And then the peaks could see as much as six feet. So again, another big concern as we look at severe conditions for the Sierra. All right, let's talk about the winds. Now that's just going to make everything so much worse. It's kind of the situation you just kind of want to stay home for. There's really no need to travel if you don't have to because these high winds are so bad. It's just not going to make it easy to drive anywhere at this point in time, especially on major roadways. Now, again, talking 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts possible up and down the valley, the foothills, the Sierra and the coastline. So everyone getting it. And we're also going to be looking at really potential for power outages. It's very likely a lot of neighborhoods may see power outages. This is Sunday 2 a.m. to Monday 4 a.m. 
We're also concerned now with a flood warning also in effect for some areas, especially as you see them kind of sticking out there closer to where we're near the bay, but also a flood watch that will be in effect for the valley. This will be lasting until about 4 a.m. on Tuesday, as mentioned before, as things start running off, especially into your Monday and Tuesday. That's where we see the rising creeks, rivers, and streams and localized potential flooding for neighborhoods. So keep that in mind, especially if you happen to be in a low-lying area or your neighborhood is typically prone to flooding. Winter storm warning, that is going to be in effect as well until Tuesday, 4 a.m., as we will see some snow dropping in elevation as low as 3,500 feet early Sunday morning, rising back up to about 4,500 feet. We will see a majority of the snowfall and accumulation above 4,500 feet. So anything lower than that may get in about an inch to four inches, but otherwise everything higher than that, we could see as much as two to four feet of snowfall. All right, let's talk winds as they start kicking up 2.30 a.m., most of them along the coastline there and moving in toward Modesto and Stockton. And as we get right around 9.30 a.m., very strong wind gusts out of the southeast begin to approach areas of Sacramento. Marysville still not seeing it yet, but it's coming. And then we finally get to the lunchtime hour and everyone starts to feel the effects. Check out these 50 mile per hour wind gusts expected into the evening hours and again could even push 60 miles per hour. We're again not just seeing it for the valley or those foothill and Sierra spots, but everyone is seeing it. We typically focus on the Sierra as having some of the strongest winds or the coastline or coastal range, but it is really the valley that's going to get a brunt of it as well. Looking into Monday morning, things slow down about 10 mile per hour winds in the valley looking much better, but we still have chances for rain. So let's time out the rain event for you. We're looking at 10 p.m. That's we're already seeing some of that rain approaching that coastline and then moving into the valley around 1030 to 11. We finally continue to see heavy rain into the early morning hours with snowfall at least levels here. Snow dropping to about 3,500 feet. And then take a look at some of the orange and red. This is where we get the big downpours that are expected to begin moving on shore. When that comes in, just hang tight because it's going to be hard to sleep through that. Hitting rooftops and windows, especially with the strong winds. And we'll continue to see it really pushing through throughout the day. It's not going to be until the evening hours we start getting some small breaks here and there. And then finally, it's Monday. That'll be the better day to see some more breaks here and there. Otherwise, we do expect to see some more scattered showers on Monday and continuous uh, areas of Sierra snowfall as well. Looking at potential rain totals, we could get anywhere from one to two inches of rain in the valley. The further north you head, take a look at Yuba City, almost three inches there, over three inches potentially expected in winters, two and a half in Vacaville, three inches, Santa Rosa, 3.3 Ukiah. So a lot of rain again for that 24 hour period. But it's the flooding and the ponding that we're really concerned about as well along those rivers, creeks and streams. Southern California looking at much higher rain totals as they're going to get pretty much hosed there with that atmospheric river for a longer period of time, but also getting low lying areas near the ocean expected to see a lot of flooding there as much as maybe even three to six inches of rain may be possible. They are really on alert for those zones in Southern California. Looking at our snowfall totals, we could see two to four feet of snow, 39 inches potentially for Donner, 43 Kirkwood, 41 Bear Valley. Some of the peaks may see a little bit more. And then our European model also showing very similar numbers. Now taking a look past this next storm system, we're looking at Wednesday. We do get a break, partly sunny skies, maybe a little bit of snow showers here and there. As we start moving into the morning, we do have something passing by, but it's Thursday. We may get another shot at showers, mostly coming in from the south. Otherwise, as that passes through, we have about a 30 to 40 percent chance to see those showers into Friday. All right, let's take a look at our temperatures. We're actually going to be fairly warm. So even without power, especially in those foothills and valley spots, you're going to be decent. At least definitely bundle up. Make sure you are prepared in case there is a power outage. But temperatures will be been right around these mid to upper 50s at their overnight lows in the mid to low 40s. And then taking a look at the Bay Area, upper 50s, low 60s for the daytime highs. The Valley looking at those mid to upper 50s as well. Overnight lows, some areas may get a little colder, but we are mostly looking at the mid to upper 40s overnight. So not very cold, but definitely something you want to prepare for. Get the extra blankets out. Make sure you have battery powered flashlights, things of that sort to make sure you can see in your house if power does go out. Take a look over the next couple of days. We do have mostly the big rain event again. Sunday to Monday. Tuesday, you're seeing a peak of sunshine there because we have scattered shower chances. Wednesday is a bit of clearing. And then again, a slight chance there Thursday into Friday to see potentially some more showers. Otherwise, you're looking at Super Bowl weekend with some sunshine and temperatures in the 60s.